for some reason, we just always keep hitting that sorry button. Why do we do that? Hello, beautiful soul. This is your intuitive yogi, Concha Joy. And today I wanna to talk to you about why do we keep apologizing for no apparent reason when it's not even our fault, when things are not even bad, but for some reason, we just always keep hitting that sorry button. Why do we do that? Why are we hitting the sorry button when it's really not that big of a deal and we really don't need to apologize? Okay, I have a really funny story. This happened a long time ago where um, it was the middle of the night, right? This was my this is my most embarrassing sorry story okay, I'm about to share with you guys. But listen, I, it was the middle of the night, right? This really happened. And um, I had a roommate, right? My roommate was next door. Um, I was I was on the other side, right? We were upstairs, beautiful home. And um, I'm naked. Almost, almost naked, almost naked, you know, I was, you know, it was the middle of the night as I was saying, sleeping, right? And I walk out of my room, I'm like, lazily going to the bathroom, which is right next door to us. And at the same time, he comes out of his room and I'm like, oh my God. Like, the first thing I say, I'm like, I'm sorry. Why? And then I run into the bathroom, like, why did I say that? Why did I, why did I jump in my own skin say apologize, say I'm sorry, when I'm in my own space, when I'm in my own home, when I'm going to my own bathroom, when I'm in my own little area, okay? Why did I apologize? And I wanna share this with you because it has been a game changer, right? The reason why we're apologizing is because we have an attitude of perfectionism, right? I want you to just take that in. We have an attitude of perfectionism. Okay, so think about this in your life. How is it that you are trying to act perfect, right? That we are trying to be perfect in some way. When we are just human, we're here to experience all of the emotions. We're never going to be perfect. And that is okay. That is a beautiful thing, right? Because when we try to be perfect, we are blocking off intimacy. Because what we're projecting is, um, yeah, I'm perfect. I have it right. Um, you know, I, I have all these things that you, that I'm already smart. I don't need to, I don't need to, you know, change. But what we're doing is we're blocking off this element of intimacy, of collaboration, because what we're doing is we're saying, you know, I'm the expert here. And so what I wanted to share with you is, is that, you know, is there a part of you that is over trying to be perfect? Is there a part of you that is wanting to be perfect for some reason, right? Maybe maybe there's a part of you that is wanting to be perfect because you try to tailor all of your conversations and situations and circumstances to fit the mold. Maybe you're wanting to be perfect because you want people to like you. Maybe you're wanting to be perfect because you don't leave any error for mistake, right? Or mistake errors, right? You don't leave any room for that. Right? Why is it that you you are apologizing, right? Why is it? Because deep down, right, if we journal this out, right, and I want you to journal it out, right? Why am I apologizing? What is it? What am I getting out of apologizing? Why am I doing it? What is how is it benefiting me? And when you write all this stuff down, you're gonna realize that you know what? There's no reason to try to be perfect. There's no reason to perfect things. You are already perfect. You are already amazing. You have already got everything you need. And guess what? You're awesome, okay? So you don't need to try to be perfect, all right? And I wanna share with you that, you know, so many women that I have worked with have come to me with this thing, right? And I'm like, oh, this is perfect because you know what? I am a recovered, right, fully recovered, uh, you know, empath, right? Someone who's taking on someone else's energy, right? So there's, there's a difference between being empathic and being compassionate. We want to be compassionate, but being compassionate doesn't mean we need to take on someone else's energy. It just means we want to be compassionate. We want to understand where they're coming from. If we're on the ledger above, we want to offer them a hand and pull them up with us and give them the opportunity, right? And people want to do that with us too. 
People want to do that with us. But when we are acting perfect, we do not allow anybody to offer the hand to say, hey, let me help you because we are already saying, I don't need help. I'm already perfect. And this is a defense mechanism. This is a huge defense mechanism. It is just something that is stopping you from, it's just let it literally, your walls are not coming down, right? Your walls are not coming down. You're allowing your walls to stay up. You're, you're not allowing anybody in because you're, you're fearful. You're scared of it. Okay. And I don't mean like, I don't mean to be insulting. Like you're fearful. No, like, I'm not saying you're you're a worried person or you're a fearful person, but to allow someone in, to allow someone into your emotional space, to trust that they're gonna take your best interest as theirs, that's a scary thing, right? So when we try to be perfect, it's just, it's blocking off a level of, of connection with another person. It's blocking off a level of, you know, connecting with them, really getting to know them, really owning them, really, you know, owning that, that depth of being cared for, right? So let's journal this out. Are you afraid of being cared for? Are you afraid of allowing someone in because they might hurt you? Are you afraid to be vulnerable with someone? And if you are, that is okay. That is okay, beautiful soul. You want to know why it's okay? Because this all stems from childhood. And I'm not saying that your parents are bad or that your parents have done something wrong. No, not at all. All of our parents are growing, are learning. They, they do not have all the answers, right? They do not. They're not perfect. In fact, what I truly believe is that when someone decides to have a child they are having that child and that child is being birthed basically all of the desires all of the all of the desires that the person like the parent wanted is being implemented into that child let me explain this if a parent is you know closed off and a little bit rigid they desire to be a little bit more open because it feels better. So they're going to have a baby that can teach them this lesson. So every parent that has a child has a child that is going to teach them that lesson that they so desire, right? That lesson of unconditional love. Okay. So basically our children are amazing and they're here to teach us, right? That is the most beautiful thing in the world because we need to, un we unconditionally love those beautiful babies. But, you know, it's so hard because we are really working with our own little blocks, okay? So anyways, that's, that's my little spiel, is that it all stems from childhood. And think about it like this. If your parent desired for something and you inherited the opposite, which was their desire, which was to be open, to be loving, to be compassionate, to be soft and gentle and easy or whatever it was, they're going to have a really hard time allowing you to fully be you because that is their block baby that is their block so you know have a little bit of compassion for the, your parents please right i know it's not easy because you know sometimes we have little things but i want to say that you know if if our parents had such a challenging time you know allowing us to be fully authentically us while we were kids growing up then we are going to have a an inherent challenge being that natural exuberant whatever it is fill in the blank side of us because we're not used to expressing it around our parents most of the time right so what i'm saying is if you feel like you're always apologizing you have to be perfect chances are that Unfortunately, you weren't accepted as much as you should have been as a child, which is okay, right? So where, where, where do we go from here? What do we do now? We self-validate, babe. We self-validate. We say to ourselves, you know what? That did happen. And that did feel really bad. That felt this way and that way. And we write it all out, right? For me, I love journaling. That's something that I've just started loving to do. And we journal it out. 
yeah, it didn't feel good to do this. This is what I learned that did feel bad. And you want to go deep into these feelings of maybe inadequacy, of maybe why you feel like you have to try so hard, why you feel like you're looking for outside validation, why we are, you know, just apologizing way too much, right? Apolog apologizing frequently, over frequently. And I want to invite you to look at your self-love, your self-worth, your self-esteem, your self-trust. And if you need any help with that, know that I got you. You can always go onto my website, conchajoy.com, because I have specialized, beautiful programs, courses, meditations, and all kinds of amazing stuff. And of course, I'm linking all of my resources below for you. Okay, but I want to say that, you know, this is nothing that you can't handle. This is nothing that you can't overcome. You can overcome anything in life. It, it just takes a shift of belief and that, and that takes a little bit of time. You know, it takes a little bit of work because we got to massage it out, right? We got to massage our mindset out, right? And I know about this because let me tell you, I'm a Taurus and these Taurus, this Taurus energy, let me tell you, it took me a long time to massage it out because, you know, I'm a bull. And not only that, I have no air in my chart, right? I literally have no freaking air in my chart. So guess what? I am like the head, not, I don't mean to be, you know, I'm not saying anything bad about myself, but I'm saying I'm like the heavy, earthy, you know, watery, fiery energy, right? But I'm lacking a lot of air. So guess what? That was air is like your, your curiosity, right? Your thinking space. So for me, it took literally some miracles baby to get me where i am so I, I know that if i can do it i know you can do it that's all i'm saying is that i know you can do it i know you got this okay so anyways that is all i wanted to say is that if you're over apologizing stop it don't do it anymore okay i'm telling you right now take a moment of pause when you're in the situation you're like i'm so what were you gonna say nothing nothing i wasn't gonna say anything don't say it don't say it okay but that is all. Just pause before you say it. Pause before you go out apologizing, okay? Because, you know, when we're over apologizing, we're taking the blame. And Lord knows you do not want to take the blame when it's not yours, honey. You do not want to take the blame. You do not want to self-blame. It is not your fault. You do not need to be perfect anymore, okay? You already are perfect, okay? That is all I want to say. All right, have a beautiful rest of your week and I will see you all for the next video. Remember, I'm putting videos out every single Tuesday. So if you want a new video, then you better subscribe, click the like button. And also, if you have any funny stories like my roommate story, that was hilarious. That, I mean, I thought it was funny. Like it was so embarrassing. I was like, oh my God, here I am naked apologizing, but ah, face palm. But yeah, if you have any good comments you wanna share with me, make me feel better about that or whatever. I don't, you know, it's all good. But yeah, share them in the comments and I will see you all very soon for the next video. Mwah. Bye.